Do you remember having to make decisions between two or more choices? You like some things about one and some other things about the other. This happens all the time. Now think of all the many products and services in the market hoping to compete successfully, hoping to offer consumers the most appealing features and benefits at the right price, trying to get ahead of competition while increasing share and profits at the same time. It's a complex and challenging task, and most managers are only making educated guesses, gambling with tens of millions of dollars. For those product and service providers who don't just want to make guesses, there's an increasingly popular scientific approach called discrete choice analysis. Discrete choice analysis is a marketing insights technique for predicting how products you create should perform when taken to market. Products win in the marketplace by offering the right combination of features at the right price. Imagine a credit card offer you get in the mail. It's really the sum of its unique benefits to you. Does it have an annual fee and how much? What is the interest rate? Does it offer balance transfers? Does it offer travel perks? Do you get points for your purchases? How many? Do you get any money back? And many more. The combination of these features determines how appealing the card is to you. Every product or service forms its appeal to consumers as the sum of the benefits it offers. A fast food restaurant may be considering a new flavor of milkshake and curious how its customers will react. A hotel may be considering offering free breakfast but charging for Wi-Fi. Will the appeal for one outweigh the displeasure with the other? Similarly, an office equipment manufacturer may try to decide whether to charge its customers as a monthly subscription or based on how much the product is being used. And think of the car manufacturer trying to balance safety features, speed, agility, comfort, size, while keeping its costs down. This here is Carolina, who works as the head of sales at an automobile manufacturer. Competitors recently started offering attractive sales packages, and Carolina's sales have been trending down. Carolina, like most of us, would be tempted to copy what competitors do. But Carolina wants to make decisions based on customer insights. One way, the traditional way, would be to expose customers to some potential sales deals and ask them how likely would they be to purchase it. The problem is that Carolina could only ask about a limited number of sales deals before she would run out of sample and budget. There has to be a better way. There is a better and more scientific way called discrete choice analysis based on the concept that by analyzing how people make choices, we can measure what product features drive their decision making. The key for the analysis is to simulate hundreds of potential sales offerings from its many components. Carolina lists the potential ingredients that she can use to create sales offerings from. For example, a car for $18,900 with a 70% trade-in value, 40% down payment, with a 36-month loan at a 5.5% interest. A discrete choice analysis software then combines these and creates different offers that are presented side by side in a survey to potential customers who are asked to pick which would they find the most appealing. Then, a new set of completely different offers are shown and consumers again are asked to evaluate them and to pick the one they like the most. Each survey respondent is asked to make a choice 10 to 15 times, evaluating 30 to 50 randomly created offers. When you have a large enough sample, the software may collect information on thousands of choices and is able to measure the preferences called utilities for the various product features, both collectively and for each survey respondent. This great choice analysis produces preference scores for each product feature, and this score is different for each customer. These preference scores can be used by Carolina to determine the most optimal combination of features. She doesn't use them directly, they get applied to a statistical formula that allows Carolina to calculate preference shares or the share of consumers that prefer a specific sales deal over another. If your sample is representative, a preference share is a good way to predict market share. How is Carolina able to predict market share? Now remember that based on the discrete choice exercise that you just saw, 
where customers made thousands of choices, we have the preference scores for each product feature for each customer. That means that if we had a simulator with different product offers, we could easily find out which of these offers would maximize each customer's total preference scores. That is the offer that that customer would find most appealing. In other words, we could this way calculate a preference share for each offer. By changing the product features for a product in the market simulator, the new product would change the way total preference scores get allocated. Now some customers may find another product to be more appealing. As Carolina creates different what-if scenarios with her market simulator, the proportion of customers that would find one offer more appealing than another constantly changes. This allows Carolina to find the most optimal sales offer, one that maximizes the preference share for her brand. In fact, she most likely wants to incorporate revenue and profits in her objectives. Turns out there's a proven scientific way to maximize customer appeal, and Carolina was right to analyze how customers make choices. Whether you're in healthcare, apparel, finance, or electronics, you cannot afford to not understand how your customers value the various elements of your product or service and how you could optimize these elements to create a more appealing offering.